I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media. Today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Ryan Condren, founder of Lumerin. Ryan, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. Excited to dive into Lumerin, uh, Bitcoin mining, hash power. Um, you know, I, I know a lot about blockchain, but the mining aspect of it and the hash rates, it's a very important piece of it, uh, but I don't think I know enough. So I'm excited to dive into that today. I'd love to start off by just learning a little bit more about what you and your team have built at Lumerin, and then we'll dive into all the details. All right, cool. Uh, where where uh, where would you like to start? Uh, I mean, <laughs> we've been uh, building the the Lumerin protocol for the last two years now, and uh, we just actually launched the the proxy router on mainnet mm. um, back uh, Tuesday. So it's only just been a few days now. So um, you know, I can start at the very beginning, kind of what it is and how it functions, and I guess we just go from there. Yeah, that would be great. You know, just sort of a high level on what exactly it is Lumerin and how does it work? Cool. So, you know, the, the vision with Lumerin is it's a, it's a very easy data pattern. Um, it is uh, meant to be a decentralized uh, data stream routing system uh, through smart contract engagements. Uh, and the way we achieve that is by the Lumerin node, which is a peer to peer routing system. Um, so what we've been building over the past two years is that actual proxy node that takes its uh, commands from the smart contracts. Um, and we've uh, officially launched it on mainnet, which is uh, Arbitrum 1, that is, on Tuesday. Uh, so what you can effectively do now is go to the Lumen marketplace, uh, which is all in kind of the, the Lumen UI, and you can select a hash power contract. You can click purchase. And once that uh, purchase actually gets uh, included in a block on the chain, uh, the seller's node will pick up the order and route real hash power directly to your buyer's node, um, and you can mine with it. So you can be anywhere in the world. You don't need specialized hardware, and you can uh, buy real hash power in real time, and you can mine with it. So uh, we're really decoupling the, the location of the hardware and the control uh, in a very decentralized way. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And I know many people understand that you know, trying to mine yourself is unfeasible and, and costs a lot to try and do it competitively when you're, when you're facing warehouses full of ASICs uh, trying to compete with something in your garage. Uh, but from what I understand, cloud mining is a, a good alternative, but there's also this decentralized uh, marketplace, which, which Lumerin is. Can you talk about the difference in, in that? In, are you how are you providing extra value into uh, purchasing hash power to do mining? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, I, I, I've done it in my garage. You know, uh, in, in 2012, I originally was uh, building a GPU rigs in my garage and then eventually started buying ASICs and running extension cords all over my house to, <laughs> to reach every single circuit and, uh, you know, plug in ASICs. I, I think at one point uh, I, I went in the addition of my house and it was 130 degrees Fahrenheit in there. Um, so I, I've been through the, the ringer with trying to build, uh, you know, mines in my house and then working with miners at scale in facilities. Um, and I've seen the infrastructure and the OPEX um, associated with all of it. And it's substantial. So it's not a in a reasonable or accessible thing to a lot of people in this world to be able to do that. Um, you know, we will have hotbeds of mining and you know, whether it be in Texas or upstate New York, or, you know, we, we've heard uh, areas of South America and the Middle East now having uh, really large mining facilities. Um, and you just can't compete with that cheap power. Mm -hmm. um, but what you can do is you can build a, a virtual mining farm where you can spin up now virtual miners anywhere in the world. Um, and that, that's really the vision of Lumerin is uh, providing a virtualized environment. So just mm -hmm. as AWS revolutionized uh, the, the server and hosting industry mm -hmm. by having uh, virtualized servers and uh, tools and uh, scaling mechanisms around that, mm -hmm. uh, we want to provide the same thing uh, for mining. Mm, incredible. And, and yeah, AWS did really revolutionize being able to spin up servers and, and hosting your site. But the one thing that makes this better is that it's more decentralized. Maybe you can talk about you know, the decentralized nature. And <clears throat> I know there's a lot of problems with web hosting with AWS that they control the internet and they sort of say and can do whatever they want. 
Um, but that's not what blockchain and Web3 is about. Um, so I'm curious on you know, sort of the decentralized nature of Lumeray. Yeah, so everything is uh, brokered through smart contracts. Um, so everything is fully open sourced and auditable. Uh, when you interact with a seller uh, through the Lumen marketplace, you can review the code yourself. You can go in and you can look at the Solidity contract and you can see exactly um, what you're paying, what you're paying for, how it's going to be um, enacted with the, the Lumen proxy router. So um, it's fully auditable. Uh, it's very different uh, than a centralized service that, as you said, can uh, you know pull the plug at any point. They can freeze assets. They can um, you, they they can uh, do dispute resolution on behalf of a buyer or a seller. Um, this is all governed by code, so it's a, a predetermined engagement. Um, and I, it's it's a very very different, um, and it, it provides a lot of great freedoms and sovereignty and controlling of your data and your and your finances when you do a peer-to-peer -peer system like this but it also provides a lot of uh complexities in trust and uh and then aspects of what happens when you have a bad actor or uh you know someone that is trying to uh manipulate the system or take advantage of the system mm -hmm. um so you know be, because of this you know you have a lot of very similar problems that, you know, say like someone like eBay actually solved um, when they first launched, you know, where you have a buyer and a seller that don't necessarily trust each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and you might have a buyer saying that they bought something, never received it, or a seller saying that they shipped something, but they never really shipped it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and all these different engagements, you know, eBay has created a lot of different rules around um, how they do resolution. And some of this through PayPal now. Um, but what's really interesting is we're kind of discovering the same uh, type of engagements, but now in a decentralized fashion. So we're having to think through all the same, you know, uh, in engagement factors of a centralized market, uh, but solve it in a decentralized, trustless way, which mm -hmm. is not easy. No, it's not. And <clears throat> it definitely is better to not have extra trusted parties, but it can also make it more complicated. You know, I personally, uh, for some people, it's a daunting task to, uh, unless they're very interested in it, to try to figure out the inner workings of how the hash rate works and the profitability of it and such. And then tackling on top of that, the decentralized nature, you know, what if I don't know code or smart contracts, how is Lumeron making it easy f to make it, you know, breaking down the barriers to entry to be able to start using this and, and getting the hash power without having to go through a million hoops and to understand all the technical nature of it? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question because this this is a, a big part of onboarding uh, people into the mining ecosystem is you have to make it easy, um, and mining historically has not been easy even for uh, tech veterans and people mm -hmm. that know what they're doing. It's mm -hmm. it's still very difficult uh, in a lot of regards. Uh, it's one thing to you know get the devices online; it's another thing to even keep them online and hashing. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, with Lumeron, the, the goal was to make a very user-friendly interface um, that was very intuitive. Um, and even that was you know, very difficult because there's things that we as a team um, assume are very intuitive, mm -hmm. but it's because we've been mining and in the industry for a long time. So we really had to take a step back and uh, start having uh, people on the you know different marketing team and uh, you know friends and family playing around with it that haven't been you know mining for the last decade, mm -hmm. so they mm -hmm. can uh, really give us honest feedback of what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, uh, what are some of the terms and even uh, messaging that we give inside the UI that doesn't make sense. So mm -hmm. that was the the, the first challenge. Um, the second challenge is uh, we're we're routing real time data streams and. A lot of computers come with uh, firewalls and are sitting behind Wi-Fi routers. And, um, so there, there's port forwarding issues. Uh, that's actually been the, the biggest one to navigate. Um, so we, we've we worked through it. We have a lot of um, you know how-to videos and guides on, on how to you know set up port forwarding on your router or mm -hmm. use Ngrok or a similar service to do a VPN tunnel um, as the Lumen uh, proxy matures, we want to start baking some of that software into the install um, mm -hmm. so you don't have to set up that stuff manually. And I think mm -hmm. that will be a kind of a natural progression 
um, of the ecosystem is ha- having all that built in. Uh, for now, I'd say that's one of the largest hurdles. Mm-hmm. Um, and then lastly, uh, the team at Titan has uh, actually launched a lightning pool, which is, mm-hmm. uh, we haven't actually uh, seen that anywhere before. And I thought, you know what, like, how do we make this as easy as possible for people to mine? And another sticking point was uh, people would have to point their hash rate at a mining pool. And a lot of people have never set up a mining pool account before. Um, and that can be a, a little intimidating if you've never done that and you don't really understand that. And, you know, all of a sudden you're in a you're in a decentralized ecosystem buying hash power. And now you're being asked to set up a username and password at some third party service to actually um, use that hash power somewhere. Um, so the, the team at Titan and Titan um, launched a lightning mining pool, which is at lightning.titan.io. And all you do is you enter your lightning address. Um, and it, we bake that into the, the Lumeran proxy. So when you're setting it up, if you simply give the Lumeran proxy your lightning address, it will forward the hash rate onto the Titan lightning pool and you will actually real time stream sats um, as you uh, stream the hash power. Um, wow. So the, the end result was uh, was actually a very cool effect where it's it's almost instantaneous where you you load the Lumen wallet, you purchase a contract, you see incoming sockets on your Lumen wallet, and then all of a sudden you see, you see Satoshi's hitting your Lightning wallet, um, and it's all within you know minutes. So mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a very cool effect. You're you're not waiting for Bitcoin payouts. You're not waiting for mm-hmm. you know contracts to resolve. It's you know it gets picked up on the chain within 15 seconds. You see contracts or incoming sockets hitting your your wallet shortly after and then you see satoshi's hitting your wallet shortly after that hmm. um the the instantaneousness of it is is almost like magic uh mm-hmm. you know almost it's there's <laughs> still some some technical sticking points but we're working yeah. on those yeah and no it definitely all pays off when you see you know sats coming into your wallet and you're like just satoshi's coming in quickly and i think that's the part of the beauty of lightning wallet that a lot of people have yet to discover yet so that's a cool integration there uh ryan and now now that we've sort of explained uh, quite a bit, I want to go back to the major announcement that Lumen made uh, about the Arbitrum network and the launch. Can you just talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so you know, we, we've been building and testing on Ethereum testnet um, for well over a year now. Uh, we released the Ethereum testnet to the community uh, back in March. So the community has been playing with it. Uh, we have you know over 8,000 people in our Telegram channel um, we have lots of people in the Discord, and we've had over 16,000 people sign up for the testnet uh, testing. Um, that, that's great. Uh, we, we only have uh, so much capacity. Um, so unfortunately, even though you have 16,000 people uh, jostling to, to play with it, there's only, only so much hash power we could actually give away uh, during the testnet period. Um, it gave us a lot of really important insights uh, into scaling and the, the load that these proxies could handle. Uh, which is actually uh, far better than w- what we were initially um, anticipating. So uh, the software is incredibly sound, incredibly well tested, um, but it doesn't mean there there aren't bugs. You know, we, we still have some um, engagement issues with uh, the way the validator system works and the fulfillment system works, um, but we're working through those uh, one at a time with a lot of great feedback from the community. And uh, a big part of that and what's what's made this possible is uh, by moving from Ethereum testnet and Ethereum mainnet onto Arbitrum 1. Uh, so if you've played with Arbitrum 1 at all, you, you'll quickly see that it's far cheaper to transact on the network and it's far faster to transact on the network. So um, we, we found it to be incredibly useful and we think it's going to be a really great move for our community uh, to be able to buy you know, smaller amounts of hash power in, in smaller time allotments. Um, because the economics are just more sound that, you know, with, with uh, lower gas fees. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's in short. Uh, we launched last Tuesday on Arbitrum 1. That's our first mainnet release. Um, because it's all written in Solidity, we can actually really release a marketplace on any EVM. Um, there have been some talks on doing a Binance release and some other uh, network releases. Uh, for now, we're just focused on the Arbitrum build, uh, but it doesn't mean that members of the community can't uh, fork it and launch it wherever they want. Mm, wow, that's very exciting. Congratulations. 
And uh, it's, it's always fun when you have so many people joining in uh, on the testnet phase that you realize that this is something that people want. You know, we need to scale, we need to be able to scale and make sure, you know, the sites aren't going down because there's too much traffic. It's a, it's a good problem to have. So uh, that's great to hear for the team at Loomer. And, and you know, I wanted to touch back on uh, just mining. And, you know, we talked at the beginning about how you went through the tedious process of setting up all the hardware and stuff. And it's not just that of actually getting hardware. It's just like the investment that you have to make in purchasing hardware to understand, you know, the break even level and the profitability of mining. Um, there's different factors that can affect the profitability of mining, whether it's like the price of Bitcoin or the competitiveness of the hash power. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, the profitability in without obviously with this decentralized way, you don't have to go purchase hardware yourself. Uh, so that's great. You know, that lowers a lot of initial costs. But what are sort of some of the things that affect the profitability of how profitable you can be using a hash power marketplace? Yeah, so so profitability is um, tricky on resale, right? Because if uh, the hash power is is profitable to the to miner itself, then they, they wouldn't sell it uh, on the marketplace, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there, there's two reasons why a miner might sell their hash power. Uh, one is they wanna hedge their risk. So they're gonna forward sell their hash power um, to someone that wants to buy out into the future. Um, that, you know, that would be worthwhile to a miner and they might sell at a discount. Um, the other reason why they uh, would want to sell is um, at a premium. Uh, so they might want to sell in smaller chunks uh, if someone's willing to pay a 5 or 10% premium on the hash power. Uh, the, the buyers in this case, we would see... Um, you know, someone that wants to transition their um, Web3 tokens or ERC20 tokens out of an EVM system and they want to move it into a, a Bitcoin system mm -hmm. or Bitcoin network in a seamless way. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and this might be in a decentralized way, an anonymous way. Uh, there's currently no other way that I know of uh, to acquire Bitcoin an truly anonymously uh, than through mining. Mm -hmm. um, everything else has to go through some type of central system. You have to receive the Bitcoin from someone or from somewhere. Um, the only truly anonymous way of receiving Bitcoin is through the block reward. Mm -hmm. um, so because of that, um, you know, if there's if there's people that truly want to do a, a seamless transition or anonymous transition out of a Web3 DeFi ecosystem into real Bitcoin, uh, Lumrin currently is the only path for that. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be sold at a premium um, from miners. Mm. Uh, so these are these are the, the, the two sides of it. Um, what we really what we really see is uh, th there's going to be most likely several hash power marketplaces launch, um, mm -hmm. and they could all be on top of Lumen. Uh, it's really an open proxy, uh, it, so it can be pointed at um, any set of marketplaces. Mm -hmm. um, but we we foresee that there would be a KYC AML. Uh, marketplace maybe even for north america um, where more uh, publicly traded miners would uh, buy and sell hash power in in a more trusted type environment mm -hmm. um, we see a more global uh, unregulated market that would be more anonymous more of the wild west um, that's a little trickier because it's uh, um, you would have to limit the scope of each of the contracts to limit the amount of trust between the buyer and the seller um, but the, the game mechanics around a open global marketplace are going to be a, a lot uh, more complicated than a, a more trusted KYC AML marketplace. Um, but we do really see in the near future, we'll most likely have uh, different types of marketplaces um, popping up on top of the Lumen protocol, uh, depending on the, the different groups of users that want to use it. Very interesting, Ryan. And, and what is the best way for people to learn more about uh, these kinds of marketplaces and to try out the new Lumerin Arbitrum update? Yeah, so you, you can uh, check it out at lumerin.io. Uh, that's L-U-M-E-R-I-N.io. Um, it's an easy download. Um, you can bridge your tokens over to Arbitrum, send them to your wallet, and play around with the marketplace um, all inside an easy-to-use uh, interface. So it's all kind of baked in in one install. Um, the team works really, really hard to 
to uh, make it a, a very intuitive interface. Um, would love for you guys to join the Telegram, uh, to reach out to us with feedback, um, and definitely get involved in the project. Uh, you know, I often say that it doesn't matter how good the technology is if there's no community. Mm -hmm. um, you can have the, the best uh, technology on Earth, and if no one's using it, then it's not going to go anywhere. Likewise, you can have the worst technology on Earth and a ton of people using it and uh, a very vivacious community, and uh, it will it will last. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people will will point at Dogecoin as the the leading indicator of this, right? At the end of the day, we're we're making decentralized networks, and a network is people. Um, so you are going to have uh, the the most success in your project if you can engage a community and keep uh, the community involved. And that's really what we're working on is we want the community to get involved. We want the community to give us feedback, to get involved in the marketing and the development and the spreading of the word that um, hash power equals freedom. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if, uh, if you want to truly uh, interact with the Bitcoin ecosystem, if you truly um, believe in uh, freedom and finance and sovereignty and wealth, uh, then please come join us at Lumeran, get involved, uh, and help us keep uh, hash power decentralized and free. Awesome. Wise words, Ryan, and thank you so much. I will leave the link to the Lumeran platform uh, in the notes below, as well as the Telegram and the other socials that you mentioned. Uh, uh, thank you for you know, keeping the principles of decentralization in the marketplace. Uh, I'm excited to go check it out again after this new Arbitrum update. All the best with everything Lumeran moving forward, and let's follow up in the near future. Cool. Thanks.